Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Mono Black Devotion, updated with the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, which introduces quite a few new cards for the archetype, the main one being a Blood Letter of Aklazot, 4 mana, 2 for flying, saying if an opponent would lose life during your turn, they lose twice that much life instead. So it has awesome synergy with the Grey Merchant, which already wants us to have a lot of devotion. Blood Letter provides 3 devotion, so in total that's 5. So just these two alone can drain the opponent for 10, with a blood letter out and it can of course get out of hand especially with more than one blood letter in play and then all that extra devotion will also help us make a ton of mana with Nykthos, which we can then put to use to empty your hand or to level up or a warlock class. A one mana enchantment saying at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, each opponent loses one life. Might seem like a small ability here, but especially with a blood letter in play, that one damage can translate into a lot more. Then we can level it up to give us a bit of card selection, find relevant interaction for the matchup, and eventually at level 3, if we pay another 7 mana, it says at the beginning of our end step each opponent loses life equal to the life they lost this turn. So let's say all we have in play is a level 3 warlock class and a blood letter. We attack the opponent essentially dealing 4 damage thanks to the blood letter's ability. Let's say a creature also died triggering the end of turn warlock class ability. Then end of turn on the stack we've got the ability from warlock class. One damage turns into two damage. And then on top of that, we've got the level 3 ability, which will now add the 4 damage we dealt with Blood Letter, the 2 more we dealt end of turn with Warlock class, which is 6 total, and then double that once again, dealing 12. So in one turn, we managed to deal 18 damage just with Warlock class, Blood Letter, and a creature dying. So you can see how the damage can quickly add up with multiple copies of Warlock class and Blood Letter in play. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we've got four copies of the new Deep Cavern Bat as well, a 1-1 Flying Life Link that when it enters can take a look at the opponent's hand, exiling a non-land card for as long as we control the bat. So this gives us a cheap evasive creature that can maybe get some attacks in, gaining life and dealing extra damage with a Blood Letter in play, also provides one devotion. And the hand disruption is very useful now, especially with the resurgence of the Discover Combo deck in the format. So having a bit of hand disruption is very useful. Of course, we still have have four copies of Thoughtseize as well to complement the bat. And then my one mana removal of choice is Cut Down over Fatal Push, because Cut Down can actually take out a Geological Appraiser to try and fizzle the opponent's combo, whereas a Fatal Push does not in a deck that doesn't have easy ways to enable Revolt at instant speed. And then at 2 mana there's Gifted Aetherborn, 2-3 Death Touch Lifelink, providing a nice bit of devotion, and all this life gain will also help offset the life loss from Thoughtseize, from Phyrexian Arena as another nice card draw engine, drawing an extra card each turn at the cost of 1 life, and we also have 4 copies of Castle Lothwain in our mana base, so helping offset the life loss from all these extra card draw effects is also quite useful. And then a Murderous Rider, another flexible answer that can take out creatures and planeswalkers at the cost of 2 life, and then we can play a 2-3 Lifelink afterwards, or we can play the creature right away, especially if we want additional devotion. And then at 4 mana, besides Blood Letter, two copies of Frankson Obliterator, which also provides a lot of devotion to set up our various synergies. And then our mana base, as we mentioned, four copies of Nykthos, four copies of the Castle, and then a 16 Swamps alongside one Abandoned Mire. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Got the Warlock class, turn 2 level it up, turn 3 Arena. And then hopefully find more relevant interaction for the matchup. Or threats to synergize with Blood Letter. I'll wait on casting Thought Seas. This is a bit more mana efficient. Opponent could be on like a Grease Fang combo deck. Uh, Grey Merchant is tempting, so is Nykthos. Let's go with Nykthos. Can help get to a level 3 Warlock class perhaps. It's going to be an Honor Guard next. So yeah, that's a card that's kind of designed to stop the Geological Appraiser combo deck. Also stops Grey Merchant. Pwn might have some of their own synergies with the Honor Guard. For now, I think I'm happy playing Phyrexian Arena. Can maybe hide Nykthos in case they have Field of Rune. And then Blood Letter doesn't care about Honor Guard for now. But we can also cut it down eventually. Proctor, another card to stop EDB effects, and Lotus Field now to synergize with Proctor. Alright, that unlocks a lot of mana for the opponent, that's scary. Grey Merchant not looking great. I think I just play Blood Letter, and then hope it survives so we can make a lot of mana next turn. 
Thoughtseize would be my only play alongside the leveling up Warlock class, which is, I guess, still reasonable. But I also want to progress my own game plan. So Thoughtseize can have a look. Yeah, the opponent must have lost to the Appraiser deck quite a few times to build such a hateful deck for it. Possible they're playing cards like Croxa, so they can stop their own ETB effects and uh, keep the Giant in play. There's other cards along those lines. Okay, so let's say we go for Warlock class, then play Nykthos. Make a bunch of mana. I can still activate Warlock class. Thoughtseize, maybe start there. Alright, so Fatal Push, we don't really care about. Bone Crusher, also fine. So Archon and Fable, potentially the more threatening cards. Let's take the Fable. And then activate Warlock class. Could get this to level 3 right now. And then what's the plan? Make enough mana to pay for Proctor, killing Honor Guard with a cutdown. Sure. Can give that a try. Hushbringer, another way to stop ETB effect. So yeah, it's not really Grey Merchant's time to shine. Although we might still somehow fight through all this hate to set it up. Archon was maybe a reason to play my Abandoned Mire sooner, as we find another Grey Merchant. The Bats also shut down, just a 1-1 Flyer here. Okay, um, I guess we can activate a Warlock class. Finding another Bloodletter, or another Warlock class. Can play Bloodletter, and then in the opponent's turn we can... I guess it doesn't work with the way I've tapped. I can make mana with Nykthos, and then still cut down in the opponent's turn to play around Archon. But uh, another Bloodletter seems fine. And then this will enter tapped. Could also, I guess, just take out Archon now. So I don't have to worry about it. And then I can still play another Bloodletter. Since this will now enter untapped. Although I might have wanted to keep my answers to Hushbringer and Honor Guard instead. And then probably not going to play the Bat. And we do get a bunch of these triggers, which will get doubled by Bloodletter, so it's actually going to be pretty significant. <laughs> Well, I did not expect 32 damage, but I guess if you do the math, that's what happens. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand leaves a bit to be desired. No three mana plays. Pretty light on interaction, but I'll give it a shot. Maybe double Bloodletter can get the job done. Thoughtseize will have a look. Takes Aetherborn. And our opponent's red-black will be cutting down the Harvester. Don't have an answer to Fable of the Mirror Breaker if that shows up. Now triple Bloodletter. It's gonna be a Trespasser. And it will transform if we don't find anything to play. Nice spats right on time. Seeing double Stomp and a Power Ward kill. Well, doesn't really matter. I guess we'll take the power word. Surprised they didn't stomp, so they might have something else planned. Discarding Croxa, I guess. Could be a problem eventually. 
and our opponent wanted to switch it to nighttime. So I can attack with a bat, play Bloodletter. Possible they picked up a different removal spell and they want to deal with Bloodletter first. Maybe we can sneak in one point. Alright. So we're playing this into a meat grinder, but hopefully the second and third can stick around. And yeah, we see the advantage of not stomping in their turn, so they could make a 4-4 Glutton. Thoughtseize is going to take another Bloodletter, I'm sure. So it's only going to be one left. Not quite as exciting. I guess this is a Demon. Okay, never mind. Power Word Kill can't actually kill Bloodletter. Since it's non-demon specifically. So that's nice. Opponent passes. And I think just realizes that uh, Power Word Kill is not going to work. As the die. So play another one. Attack. Double double. So that's quite a bit of damage coming across. Opponent at 11. And next turn they could just be dead. If they stomp me plus an attack, still not quite enough. So they would have been better off just playing a Bone Crusher as a creature in the meantime. They could exile their own Croxa, which would be a sign that they picked up another burn spell to close out the game. But I don't think I can afford to block. Yeah, opponent Exiles Harvester and Croxa, so if they did indeed top deck another Stomp, we're dead here. Just plays Bone Crusher. Okay, let's attack. And our opponent dies. 12 more damage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Keepable hand. Turn one Hopeless Nightmare can discard a land, probably. Turn two Etherborn, turn three maybe a level up cutdown. A waste not, I see. Opponent on a discard deck. And a Thoughtseize can now take. Maybe our Bloodletter or another Aetherborn. Make a zombie. And Fatal Push or Aetherborn. Okay, Bant can have a look. And take a go blank. Leaving them with Invoke Despair feels bad, but they're pretty far from casting it. And then I can cut down the zombie now. Okay, so I can still level up Warlock class, maybe hit a land, play Aetherborn. Nykthos doesn't generate extra mana yet, but we're getting close. get our value for moral class before opponent gets rid of it. And then Phyrexian Arena looks good. And then I can sack the bat, give them go blank, and then still play Phyrexian Arena. As our opponent is gonna try and find a land here, I'm sure. Another bait. Hmm. I think it's probably still best to play the Phyrexian Arena out, so we've got that card draw engine going, and hope they didn't find another Invoke Despair, pretty much. And then if they make a zombie by making me discard, that's okay. I guess now it's going to be two zombies. Hmm. 
bad takes go blank and a fraction obliterator. Not bad. So I'll play that. And then I could trade for their zombies or we could keep the extra devotion. Just kind of play defense for a bit. And a Grey Merchant's excellent. Could still draw with Castle. I think I prefer being empty-handed, so their Waste Knot's not as effective, and yeah, her opponent has seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a Disruption-heavy hand. Uh, sure. Thought sees into maybe turn two bats. And we're up against Spirits. Okay, so Cure's Obsession... I probably don't take yet. Phantom can block our bats. Rattle Chains would just trade. So I think we start by taking Phantom. Then turn two we can bat, probably taking Rattle Chains anyway. And then we could also cut down the Spell Queller. Let's have another peek. Shacklegeist can also block flying creatures. So actually don't mind taking that one. Alright, so can attack if our opponent flashes in rattle chains. What do we do? Could cut it down in response, although keeping cut down to answer the creature day enchant with curious obsession might be better. So I could lead with Thoughtseize, make them cast a Lofty Denial. Or we can just uh, attack for one, see if they want to trade. And then play Aetherborn and let the trade happen. Opponent's probably going to just end of turn Rattle Chains, untap, try and cure Succession. Nope, goes for Lofty Denial. Okay. So now we could bait with Thoughtseize, if they spell Queller I can kill it, and then still Thoughtseize away, hopefully their last creature. And there's Spell Queller. And yeah, this is a situation where Cut Down is actually better than Fatal Push would be. And our opponent just has Rantle Chains and Cure Obsession. So even if they find another creature, we'll have Murder's Rider to hopefully deal with it. I guess they can now bounce with Soaring City as well. So that's their plan. Let's take out the Shacklegeist. So close to casting some of our heavy hitters. Uh, let's see, if we play the bat we can take a card for sure. And we are out of removal, so maybe that's still safest. Even though with a land I would be able to play Bloodletter, which can likely block their spirits. Alright, so now we can kick things off with Bloodletter, which will then generate a ton of mana with Nykthos. And then, yeah, next turn Grey Merchant could already be game. Obsession, my Bloodletter, and our opponent concedes don't even get to play Grey Merchant here, but I'm pretty sure it would have been a lethal. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we do need to draw another land here, although Warlock class can also level up to help out. No interaction, so we're going to be soft to a combo deck, but some nice cards for a grindy matchup. Bloodletter into Grey Merchant. It's going to be pretty awesome. And then Nykthos will give us a mana boost once we deploy a few more permanents. 
after one mountain. Gonna have to level up here to find a land. And can make it castle if we'd like. A roiling vortex, okay. That's acceptable. I guess it can shut down the life gain from Grey Merchant eventually. Kind of liking Bat plus another Warlock class for now. See what they're working with. And yeah, it's a pretty aggressive looking deck. Take Chandra. And then they don't have any creatures currently. So their hand's not that great. Etherborn will be pretty nice as well, gaining us some more life if they can keep up Vortex. Thoughtseize we're probably going to hang on to for now. And then we can try to uh, level up Warlock class and still play Etherborn afterwards. Bones probably activating Vortex here to deny the life gain. They don't. So they might have some two mana interaction available. Or they just forgot. So now Nykthos nets us two extra mana. And uh, yeah, let's play Bloodletter plus Aetherborn. And then next turn Grey Merchants should be game over. Doubled by Bloodletter, this is 6 damage. And we can do the math here. Let's see if we make 10, 11 mana. We're pretty close to leveling up Warlock class and then playing Grey Merchant, which would be pretty awesome, but uh, I think we can pretty safely take it if they monstrous rage and let's say have another monstrous rage uh, that's six seven eight nine ten eleven damage twelve from vortex just want to keep all my devotion here I guess if they have some double strike effect that could hurt a bit more or a ten and an all-out attack would be lethal already but hopefully they let us go through the motions. Play Obliterator, and then play Grey Merchant. They can deny the life gain, but the damage is still gonna apply. 16 doubled by Bloodletter, 32 damage. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable. Double Hand Disruption here. And then we can eventually draw with Castle if we don't have anything else going on. Our opponent on an interesting kind of aggro deck. I guess we'll take the Apicure. This might be a Gleeful Demolition deck, which requires an artifact to make three Goblin tokens. So by taking Apicure, it's going to be a bit awkward for them to set up. To play the bat. Can take the bolt hound now. And then now we could either born and cut down Halo Hopper. Although I guess the adaptive will grow into a 3 3 next turn. So it could still be worth taking out instead. Could also see not taking the Bolt Hound since a 2-2 doesn't really attack past Aetherborn after the initial ETB effect. And Grey Merchant, a reason to hang on to our Devotion. 
then we can still draw with castle. And there's an ornithopter. All right. So time to drop some gray merchants. There's a gleeful demolition, as we suspected. That's fine. So Warlock class into another Grey Merchant. Fly over. And then next turn, if we find a removal spell, we can close out the game with a passive from Warlock class. And Nykthos gives us a bunch of extra mana. So I could also just activate Warlock class to level 3 and then double the damage from the bat to close things out. And that'll do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, our hand could use a bit of help. Nykthos times two actually makes it difficult to cast our Bloodletter on turn four. Maybe this is a mulligan. All right, fine. This is a bit better. One line can go. And then could wait for Thoughtseize. For now, play Warlock class. If our opponent's got their own Thoughtseize, I might regret it. Since we want to try and protect our Frexen Arena, I assume. Blue-white. And a portable hole gets rid of Warlock class. So can't level it up now. So we'll just have a look. I see blue-white control. Yeah, they've got the veto for Frexen Arena. And then Get Lost can destroy our arena as well. So that's not ideal. I guess I would rather get the two map tokens out of it. Another arena is nice. So we can try again next turn. Test out the waters with a Warlock class. I guess now I'm kind of incentivized to level this up since Portable Hole would exile it otherwise. So it might have been better off just playing the Phyrexian Arena. And then a bat can also maybe disrupt the opponent's hand. Opponent's gonna exile the Warlock class before it does more damage. That's fine. And Field of Rune can go after a castle. So now we can double spell bats and Phyrexian Arena. Take their third portable hole. And then hopefully we can pull ahead. Can explore with the map tokens, grow the bat. Just have to watch out for Iganjo, I suppose. Castle down, but still have our Phyrexian Arena. Okay, so could start by attacking, see if they want to use Iganjo, or if they prefer using Castle Ventress, which also makes sense. And then play Bat afterwards. And then start exploring. Or I can maybe explore once to kind of bait them into using Iganjo. Which I actually prefer, I think. Nykthos can make a bit of extra mana. Because if they scry a powerful card to the top, 
It's not like we can really interact with it. Okay, play the bat after all. And take an absorb. Okay, so Punt's maybe gonna dig for a sweeper now. We want to dig for more card draw engines, like another castle, and eventually Bloodletter and Grey Merchant, of course. Opponent did keep on top, so that's bad news. This could be a Wandering Emperor. Could be a Counterspell. There's Grey Merchant and an Obliterator. Well, I can play both. before attacking, so we don't uh, lose our devotion. And then I don't mind sending in both. Point is going to be scrying to look for a sweeper once again. Bottom, bottom. So they haven't found one. Get to take our turn. And a Murderous Rider, plus another Nykthos is next. So if they have a Wandering Emperor, they can Exile Obliterator and still survive. I think we should still attack with it. And make them use it here. Yep. If I Murderous Rider my own Obliterator, we can deny the life gain, but our opponent would still be at 1. So... Probably better off destroying the Emperor itself, and then playing Murderous Rider afterwards. My judgment is <laughs> Try not to miss me. Okay. So your opponent still has to top deck. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Ferex and Arena gets it done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable. Gigantha's companion. We've got double Aetherborn to gain life to offset our Ferex and Arena. Slide of hand, so maybe a blue red Phoenix deck. So don't expect Aetherborn to necessarily survive for long. Fiery Impulse likely to take it out. Alright, for now a Bank Buster, so it might be something different after all. Yeah, don't mind getting the Phoenix and Arena going. Could also go Warlock class, play another Aetherborn, keep up the pressure. Although next turn we can play Obliterator, which is probably pressure enough. So I wouldn't mind drawing more cards in the meantime. If our opponent's more of a combo deck, drawing into a discard spell might also be important. Mirex does potentially point towards a Transmogrify kind of deck, trying to cheat Atraxa into play. Step 1 attack. Could play Warlock class, level up, and still cast a Thought Seize potentially. Kind of like just playing Obliterator now. Shark Typhoon makes a token, so they can set up their Transmogrify next turn. Don't have many answers to Notraxa. Their land enters tapped, so maybe no Transmogrify after all. So we maybe have another turn. So now we could find a cut down to take out the Shark in response. So play Nykthos. Can play Aetherborn, which is kind of mana neutral here. Although I guess if I find removal with Warlock class, I would be forced to cast it now, and I wouldn't be able to keep up the mana afterwards. We might be able to just uh, level this up all the way. 8, 9, 10 mana. Yeah, we can uh, play this and level up to level 3. Would make this an attack for 14 damage. I think we'll be able to beat an Atraxa, so sure.
Could also find a Grey Merchant here. Another Obliterator or a Thoughtseize. Sure, grab Obliterator and just level this up once again. Going Obliterator number 2 plus Arena also would have been decent. But yeah, this is an attack for 14 damage if our opponent takes it. And then it's going to be pretty easy to eventually find a Grey Merchant to close out the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's reasonable. A Bat and Murderous Rider for interaction. And then Double Bloodletter can do a lot of damage. Well, let's see what we're up against. Forest and Speaker, so Merfolk. Alright, let's have a look. And Company, probably worth taking. Although I could also take it next turn with a Deep Cavern Bat. For now, take Hex Catcher. Sure. Murder's Rider, I might just play as a Life Linker since the adventure is unlikely to resolve. And then for now, Pun can play Hex Catcher, hit us for three. And I'm gonna play Wayfinder instead. Alright. So they'll get some value. Could also now take the Hex Catcher and leave them with company, which they're somewhat far from casting. And then I don't have to worry about them countering my Murder's Rider. And then a 2-3 blocks a 2-3. Yeah, you know what. There's still some other lords they could have, of course. So it's not like their creatures are going to stay the size they are currently. Playing Murder's Rider as a creature also has the advantage of building up our devotion. So it's going to be easier to hopefully deploy the rest of my hand. And yeah, there's a Mistbinder already. Take six. Wayfinder triggers. Can maybe put a land in play. Does not. Warlock class at the draw. So even if I play Murder Strider, it doesn't really block all that well. And it's not like the Devotion's enough to enable a 4-drop next turn. So the option is Warlock class level up, which makes it more likely that I can play Bloodletter next turn. Or we can just take out Mistbinder right now. Take two down to eight, and then they can hit me back for maybe four damage. And then hope to draw land naturally, pretty much. And that is reasonable. Warlock class also builds up her devotion slightly. But then what happens? I take eight down to two. And then even a bloodletter might not stabilize me. I guess we gain a bit of life back, but yeah, it's still kind of tough. Take four. So our opponent did keep the card on top that they uh, saw last turn. Could be a spell pierce, who knows. Just gonna play Bloodletter. And we can hit for one, which will basically be two damage here. That to her removal on Bloodletter. Now there's still one land away from company. I see Kopala to protect their creatures. Block Speaker. Take four. Then they can maybe find a land for company, but I think we'll be fine with it. So Wayfinder finds a land. But now Nykthos makes enough mana for Grey Merchants. I probably should have played Warlock class first, but doesn't matter, opponent's dead. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is keepable. Got a Warlock class to hit our land drops, and then... Maybe find a Nykthos, which can generate a lot of mana here. Opponent with turn on Epicure, so this is the Boros Convoke deck. Don't think I want to cut down Epicure. Thoughtseize, on the other hand, might be worth it. Although, means I wouldn't be able to necessarily Warlock class and level up next turn. 
the card I really want to take are the various Convoke cards, or maybe a Gleeful Demolition with a Blood Token. So maybe I should still go for it here. No Demolition, double Recruiter. So if I take the Reinforcements, their turn might not be too exciting. Makes the Recruiter a lot less impactful. Next turn we can maybe double one drop. Put and found a Thalia. Alright, that's certainly worth taking out now. Don't have to do it right this second. But probably before we take damage. Alright, there's Nykthos, perfect. I'm kind of interested in just playing Murderous Rider as a creature. Could also go with Warlock class, level up. Next turn, Bloodletter. Turn after Obliterator, maybe start leveling up. Although having a lifelinker going is pretty nice. Recruiter's a 2-2, so we can attack past it, and then with a Bloodletter, we can double the damage from Murderous Rider. There's a Warden, a nice addition for the deck. Can grow pretty quickly. So we probably will need a Grey Merchant eventually to help cross the finish line. The Blood Token also helps grow the Warden. And yeah, now the Recruiter can represent quite a bit of damage. So I might have to keep Murder Rider back instead of attacking. Well, that would be an attack for 4 damage. And then Bloodletter is still a good blocker. Yeah, I think I go for it. So do we see a third land plus Recruiter? Or is this a Convoke? Next turn I can pretty much empty my hands with Nykthos. And there's a Loxolm, so the opponent's creatures are getting big. Warden flies. And our opponent goes digging. Okay, so we can play Warlock class, since our mana with Nykthos stays the same. And then activate Nykthos. I level up Warlock class, and then I can still Obliterator and Thoughtseize. But we might find something better, such as a Grey Merchant would have been nice. Another Obliterator, I guess I'll take. So if I tank with Bloodletter, we deal 4 damage. Yeah, that seems fine. Don't think we're dead on the way back, but maybe Thoughtseize first, just to double check. Knight Errant. I think they can have a Knight Errant. We're still going to be attacking with Obliterator, which will require a lot of blocks. And Recruiter's pretty scary here. So that's another 4 damage. Can also level a Warlock class to level 3. So Warden's going to attack and play defense here. Knight Errant finds Apicure Ornithopter. Ornithopter, a way to absorb some damage from Obliterator without dealing damage to it. And they've got two of those now. So it's gonna be close. A Grey Merchant would solve our problem. And Deep Cavern Bant instead. So if I play the Bats, Nykthos makes 11 mana. That's still enough to play Obliterator and upgrade Warlock class. Sure. Obliterator can attack, and we'll see what happens. Well, 
that damage is going to get doubled and then doubled again end of turn by Warlock class, which will then get doubled once again. So more than enough. All right, so a week after posting the Discover combo deck in Explore, there's not much of the deck left to be seen. But admittedly, most of the decks we faced were definitely prepared to beat the matchup. So it seems like most of the decks are successfully hating out the Discover combo, which means that there's probably going to be a bit of an ebb and flow where the combo now might be gone for a while, but then it will return as the hate dies down. And then there's going to be a more diverse meta as a result. But we'll have to wait and see how the combo will affect the format in the long term. For now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.